In my previous video, I showed how to use the dependency injection design pattern to let you do unit testing. We used dependency injection so that we could create mock objects that access the database, so that way our unit test wouldn't need to have a database running. That works fine, but if you had a large application, you might need to create dozens or hundreds of mock objects, and that's something you wouldn't want to do manually. Fortunately, there's a solution to it. There are some third-party libraries that let you automatically create mock objects. In this video, I'll show you how to use Mock, M-O-Q, which is a popular mocking library for the .NET framework. I'll be using the code from the previous video, so if you haven't seen that, or if you aren't familiar with dependency injection, you'll probably want to watch that first. For a quick overview of the classes, we have the iPlayerDataMapper, which is the interface for the class that accesses the database. We have the player data mapper class, which actually does the access to the database. We have the player class, which has the create new player function that takes in an iPlayer data mapper. This is the dependency injection part. There's the test player class, which is the unit test class in the unit test project. The tests here use a mock player data mapper class which lets us set up the results we want the data mapper to return and also makes it so we don't have to have a database running for our unit test. The first thing we need to do is add the mock library to the unit test project. I'm going to do that through NuGet, which is a Visual Studio plugin to help you install third-party libraries. I'll right-click on the test engine project, which is my unit test project and select Manage NuGet Packages. It comes up with a list of different libraries that we can add to the projects. If you notice that Browse lets us look for libraries, if you click on Install, that will show you all the installed libraries in this project, which right now are, there are none. So we'll go back to Browse, and we'll search for MOQ. And this is the library we want, MOQ with 7.65 million downloads, so it's a pretty popular library. There are some additional mock libraries you can add, but right now we'll just add the first one, the main one. So select mock, and click on the install. We get a pop-up telling us what changes are going to be made to the project, and I'll say OK. If we look over in the test engine references, we can see that mock is added to it now. I'll close the NuGet tab since we don't need it anymore, and I'll create a new unit test class where we can do mock versions of our existing unit tests. Just right click on my folder, add unit test, and I'm going to rename it to test player. Then I'll copy and paste the existing unit test from the old test class. And I'll add a using engine.mock so we have access to the player object. Now we can replace our manual mock player data mapper with an object that's created by the MOQ mock library. First, we need to add a using statement for the mock using MOQ. Then I'll replace all of our manual mock player data mapper objects with ones created by the MOQ library. So down here in our first test, delete that line to create a mock object that implements I player data mapper. I'll just do var mock equals new mock and it's a typed mock of I player data mapper. So this is how we create a mock object using MOQ that implements the I player data mapper interface. Here where we're passing in the mock object, I need to replace this with mock.object. So this object property from mock is an instance that acts like iPlayerDataMapper. 
For this test, we don't need to do anything else, but I'll fix the other two tests now. In this next test, we want to pretend like the player name already exists in the database, so we're going to set up a return scenario for our mock object. I'll get rid of the old mock object and create a new mock object using the MOQ library. And now I need to set up the return result for this mock object. You can figure that by calling the setup function on the mock object. So mock.setup. I'm just going to call this x. And when I do x dot, we see the functions that the iPlayer data mapper defines. Player name exists in database and insert new player into database. What I want to do is for this test, I want to say when we call player name exist in database, we want to return a true. So I say x dot player name exist in database. And I want to do this for any value that gets passed in. I don't care what value it is. To do that with the mock library, you do it dot is any, and it's a typed parameter, in this case a string. So when we call the player name exist in database on the mock object, any value that gets passed in as a parameter, we want to return true. In our old manual mock object, we set this property here, result to return. This is how you do it with the mock objects created by the MOQ library. So we're saying set up the mock object when you call player name exist in database and pass in any parameter, return true. So I can get rid of the old configuration for the manual mock object. And now for the dependency injection, when I pass in the iPlayer data mapper, I need to replace that with mock.object. So this will pass in an object form of this mock iPlayer data mapper. And it's configured so when create new player tries to access the player name existing database, it will return a true. Now we'll clean up the third unit test that used the mock object. And I'm just going to copy this and replace the old code except in this case we want it to return a false. So when create new player calls player name exists in database on our mock object, it's going to return false. It's going to say the player isn't in the database, so you can keep on going. Here in the call to the player.create new player, we need to replace our old manual mock object with the with the new mock object. Now we don't have any more errors. Let's save this and run all the tests. And they're all green. So by using the MOQ mock library, we can eliminate all those manual mock objects we would have had to have created before. And we also have an easier to understand method using a fluent interface to define what actions we want the mock object to take with what parameters and what return results. I'll include a link in the description so you can see all the things you can do to configure your mock objects, but it gets pretty advanced, which is nice because then you can test all sorts of scenarios that your code normally wouldn't be able to unit test. If you have any questions about this, please leave a comment below. Thanks.